Good morning. We welcome all of you to worship on this last Sunday of the church year, the day that we are reminded of the Lord's promises to come on the last day and suffering, pain, and sorrow in bringing the new heavens and the new earth. We do want to welcome our guests today. We have many guests with us for two reasons. The uh, Upper School Choir of the Augustine School will be providing wonderful music to enrich our service, and we're glad to welcome all of you and your families uh, to our house of worship today. And we're also welcoming new members uh, today, and so some of them have brought family and friends to rejoice in their confirmation and in their uh, joining our congregation. Uh, our service is printed out for your convenience. The only thing that you'll need to find in the hymnal are the hymns, um, which are listed there so you can find them easily. At this time, we will stand for our opening hymn. God bless your worship.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you reign among us by the preaching of your cross. Forgive your people their offenses, that we, being governed by your bountiful goodness, may enter at last into your eternal paradise. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the last Sunday of the church year is from Malachi chapter 3. Your words have been hard against me, says the Lord. But you say, how have we spoken against you? You have said it is vain to serve God. What is the profit of our keeping his charge or of walking as in mourning before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the arrogant blessed. Evildoers not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them, and a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make up my treasured possession, and I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. Then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Colossians chapter 1. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross." This is the word of the Lord. We stand in honor of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. There followed Jesus a great multitude of the people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, The days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, 
What will happen when it is dry? Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess the Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs>
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's sermon is our epistle lesson from Colossians chapter 1. Please pray with me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it's been almost a month now since we set our clocks back an hour and daylight savings time vanished with the fall. The days are getting shorter. The light is going away, which means that the darkness is coming and growing and appearing to be taking over. In ancient times, pagan unbelievers thought the darkness signaled the triumph of evil gods over the gods of light. Of course, we know that this ebb and flow of light and darkness is part of the God-given rhythm of creation. As long as the earth remains, the Lord promised Noah, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. We're used to seasons of darkness. And yet we know that darkness has a certain power. Some of you are not able to drive in darkness of night. Many of you have gotten lost in dark places. If you walk down the street at night, there's a certain sense of vulnerability. You can't see the danger before it comes. If any of you have lived in the far north where darkness almost completely covers the face of the earth all winter, then you have likely learned or experienced yourself that darkness can even bring depression. Physical darkness has its effect, but there is an even more serious darkness, a spiritual darkness, and the spiritual darkness can be strong so strong that it seems almost as if it controls us and reigns over us. Now the scriptures don't deny this, but only confirm that indeed there is a domain of darkness with a king of darkness who is very powerful. Like a day that grows shorter and a light that gives way to darkness, it appears that this spiritual domain of darkness with its evil king who brings the darkness of sin into our lives, is taking over. It might even prove victorious in the end. And so we're tempted to despair, to lose hope, and to forget what the Lord has promised through Paul's letter to the Colossians. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his Beloved Son, the domain of darkness has been broken and Jesus, the King, is now reigning. It is fitting that Paul would call Satan's evil domain a domain of darkness. For Satan does not do his work in the light for all to see. His actions would look hideous if they were done in the open, uncovered and revealed for all to see. And so he keeps them from being exposed. He does it under cover of darkness, so to speak, hiding behind deception, luring with temptation, and taking advantage of the weak by inducing fear. Those who are ill-prepared wind up trapped in Satan's evil schemes, their lives made a mess as the darkness takes over. But others know he's lurking, but they're terrified at his power, believing that nothing could defeat him and no one could resist him. In fact, Paul says that each of you were once residents in that evil domain subjects of the evil king because sin had cast you out of the kingdom of light. But the father has transferred you to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom you have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. You were all once alienated and hostile in mind doing evil deeds, but Christ has reconciled you in his body of flesh 
by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach to the Father. You are children of the light, but the darkness seems so strong. Even now, the domain of darkness threatens you as Satan and sin pull at you. They pull at you with deception, tempting you to believe that your sin couldn't kill you or that Satan isn't trying to devour you. Never mind that scripture explicitly says that both happen to be true. And so as you grow comfortable with your sin, Satan's deception brings darkness where the Lord has attempted to bring light. And they pull at you with temptation. They'll tempt you to hide your sin and deny your sin and to keep your sin under cover of darkness. They tempt you to believe that it would be worse for you if you confessed it and admitted it and brought it out into the light where it would be known, but it would be forgiven. And so you keep it to yourselves locked up deep inside somewhere, but there, under cover of darkness, it eats away at you until finally you begin to experience the worst of those dark and devious ways. You begin to be filled with fear. You've covered, up, you've covered it up for so long, but the guilt has only grown through the years And now you've been convinced there's no way that the Lord could forgive me. What I did was too terrible. How could the gospel be for me? And so you despair. Afraid that your sin could somehow separate you from the love of God in Christ. Rather than clinging to the cross where we see his love and our redemption and the blood that brings us peace. That's the evil of Satan's dark domain, deceiving you with his lies until you're trapped in darkness, tempting you to deny your sin and keep it hidden in the darkness. Finally, the darkness so consumes you that you conclude that Jesus' death and his cross are worthless to you. Rather than asking him like the thief on the cross to remember you in his kingdom and clinging to him by faith, you end up dying in the guilt and shame and the darkness of your sin. Indeed, in this world, it appears that the darkness is growing. And so we must hear it again. We must hear that good news, the gospel promise. He has delivered you, rescued you from Satan's evil domain of darkness. He has transferred you to the kingdom of his beloved son. In Christ, you have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And despite the darkness that is all around you, the promise of God is that you have been placed under the authority and rule and power of the one who created all things in heaven and on earth. Those things that are visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rules or authorities. The gospel has been extended to you by water and the word. Through the preaching of Christ crucified, the Holy Spirit has used the good news of Christ's redemption to call you out of darkness and put you into the marvelous light of the church that will endure even against the gates of hell. The darkness can appear to be so strong, but when you have this promise, you know that the darkness will only last for a season. You, who were once citizens of darkness and have Satan and sin pulling at you day after day, God has delivered you from his domain to the holy and perfect reign of his son. It is he who is your true king and it is he who has all power and authority in heaven and on earth. Notice and trust the past tense 
of Paul's spirit-wrought words. He has delivered you. He has transferred you. It happened on the cross. It is already accomplished with the shedding of his blood and it is finished at his death. There is nothing uncertain and it was definitely not a secret. It happened for all the world to see and it cannot be denied. Jesus has died. His blood was shed and through it you have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. That is the event that brought you out of darkness. That is the light of life. Those sins which you've toyed with because you thought they couldn't kill you have now been atoned for and now stand forgiven. Those sins which you've tried to bury deep within, hiding them in the darkness of your heart, were sins that he took upon himself when he who knew no sin became sin so that you would be the righteousness of God. Even those sins you knew were wrong and know are deadly and which today continue to torment you with the guilt they bring, they are forgiven too. For there is no sin for which Christ has not died. The price he paid was sufficient The redemption he brought is complete. To know this and to trust this is to trust in the King of Kings. No matter how dark it may get, to know that your redemption is accomplished and your salvation is secure is to trust in the one who reigns and rules his kingdom not with deception or temptation or even fear, but with body and with blood and with a word of promise that brings light into darkness. When God appears to have disappeared or even seems distant and the darkness of sin seems to be growing, Paul directs us to see Jesus who is the image of the invisible God. In Jesus we are given to know the will of God. We are not left in darkness wondering what he desires for us. He has revealed everything to us in his son who he sent to live for us and to die for us and to rise from the dead even for us so that we might be heirs of his eternal kingdom which will never have an end. There is no greater love than that which the Father bestows on us when because of the blood of Jesus, we who were children of the darkness are called children of light. Satan has no claim on you, for it is Christ who made you and all things. By Christ, all things were created, Paul writes. All things were created through him and for him. By Christ, all things were created in heaven and on earth, and he holds all things together. Jesus, not Satan, is the rightful king of all. He has been given authority from the Father, and he is strong and mighty. But unlike other kings... He does not rule with his strength and might. He rules in humility. He extends his kingdom to you not with power and force, but through the preaching of repentance and the forgiveness of sins. With water and word, he makes you a new creation. By the preaching of his word, he speaks faith into your hearts. With the giving of his body and blood, he tells you that the benefits of his redemption are not just for the world, but are for you. And this, you see, is how he chooses to rule and to reign and to bring his light to all the world. That's how he holds it all together. He does not take you out of the world, but gives you a life to live in the world. With his word, he reaches into every dark corner where Satan is doing his deceiving. And as the church bears witness to his work of redemption, his kingdom is extended. One by one, darkened hearts 
are given the light of life. As pastors preach and teach and remind you of God's promises and you, the very people of God, carry this good news into your homes and your offices and your schools and wherever else you happen to go, together you are the light of the world. Through the church's witness of Jesus' work of redemption, Jesus reigns already today. Where Satan deceives and brings darkness, the blood of Christ brings light and tells us that we have nothing to fear. Sin is forgiven. Satan is defeated. And in Jesus, we even know that death cannot hold us. Jesus rose from the dead, Paul says, the firstborn of many who will burst forth from their own tombs alive and well. Where the darkness of this world seems to be so strong, The living Lord Jesus reminds us that no matter how dark it gets, even if death should have its way with us, it is only for a moment compared to the eternity which he has won for us. The days are getting shorter, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're not just talking about how early the sun goes down. But as the days grow short and the darkness seems to grow, may you always cling to the promise that you have a king whose name is Jesus. And those evil forces that are ruling in this world are no match for his word by which sin is forgiven and Satan is undone and even death will have to give way to life. By the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, you have been rescued from the darkness of sin. You have been transferred from the kingdom of, to the kingdom of his son. One day that kingdom will come in glory and the darkness will forever give way to light. But until then, you have peace through the blood of his cross. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God that transcends all understanding guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. The service continues as we sing together the offertory. Please stand. Again, we do extend a special word of welcome to all of our guests and visitors. We're glad you're here and we would love to have you worship with us again soon. We do ask that everyone take a moment to fill out the burgundy folders in your pews so we have a record of your worshiping and a way to be in touch with you. You may be seated.
It is our pleasure today to welcome, to be welcoming new members uh, into membership here at Concordia. And so at this time, we ask all those being welcomed today to come forward and just uh, spread across the front here. Um, some of them are welcomed uh, by transfer, uh, transferring from other Lutheran congregations who have moved here to Jackson. Others of them are actually being confirmed today, having completed a 10-week course and uh, in, in instruction, and so they will be uh, welcomed as well. And uh, so we uh, invite you all to follow along as uh, the right is printed in the bulletin. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith, according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Yes. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, for he is God and God and the Lord He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Christ. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran church drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? Will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts God has given you? We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Kayla Jordan Webb. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Kayla, the passage I specifically chose from you is John chapter 8, verse 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Patrick Jerome Whalen, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. 
Amen. Patrick, the passage I chose for you is Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Congratulations. Darla. Darla K. Caps. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Darla, I chose for you Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Congratulations, Darla. Jennifer. Helen Jennifer McKeithen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Jennifer, I chose for you Proverbs 30, verse 5. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Congratulations. And Whitney. Whitney Lynn Grimes, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace, to life everlasting. Amen. Whitney, I chose for you John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Congratulations. Upon this, your confession of faith, I acknowledge publicly that you are members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and this congregation. Receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand for prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit they may continue steadfast in the one true faith in the fellowship of this congregation, as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. You can all go back to your pews now. Uh, you will have an opportunity to greet them after the service. Uh, the LWML, of course, is having their bake sale and craft sale, and we'll have a reception both for them and for the Augustine School Choir. And we will also be presenting them with their certificates and other gifts as well. It is the practice of the Lutheran Church and of this congregation to distribute the Lord's Supper to those who have con uh, been instructed and confirmed their faith in the Lutheran Church. But we do recognize the common bond all Christians have in the gospel. And so if you've not received such instruction or are not a confirmed member of a Lutheran Church, we do invite you forward to receive a blessing. Simply come forward at the usher's direction, place your hands across your chest, and we will know to give you that blessing. If you desire to understand more about what we teach about the sacrament, please let us know. I'd love to have a conversation with you so that one day we might commune together. We continue on page 12. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It 
It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.